Hello everyone, and welcome to the 35th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, and in the next few tutorials, I'm going to be covering some new additions that we have to Objective-C, some new things that have come along over the past year or so, and uh, the main one that we're going to be covering in today's tutorial is ARC, which is otherwise known as Automatic Reference Counting. And this isn't going to be really uh, the definitive guide to ARC by any means, it's going to be really a pretty simple introduction, um, because it's much easier to show in the Coco tutorials. And so uh, we're going to have some Coco tutorials, well at least one Coco tutorial anyway, on uh, kind of how to use ARC in your Coco application. But this tutorial is really going to be why we have ARC and just some, some new things and how you can convert some old projects uh, to using ARC. So um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, one thing I wanted to briefly talk about, though, is that uh, we have this new at sign auto release pool. Uh, at least since the last time, it's been around for a long time at this point. But since the last Objective C tutorial, anyway, uh, we were using NS auto release pools, and basically now we have this new syntax, which is the at sign auto release pool. You can think of it the same way, really. Uh, it's a little faster now. They optimized it, and it really the main reason they made it was for ARC. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, this is the new syntax for auto release pools, basically. And we just type whatever we want in between, you know, these braces or brackets here. All right. So anyway, that's I'll just leave it at that. That's that's your new NS auto release pool right there. All right. So. Um, Arc. What do what what why do why is Apple bringing Arc into this? We already have you know two different ways that we can manage memory in Objective C. Why do we need a third one? Well, actually, you'll see why hopefully by the end of this tutorial a little bit, uh, and you'll see more about this in the Cocoa ones as well. But you'll really see that it's not really to make a third way, but it's really to make one way that we're going to be using from here on out and it's going to become kind of the way to manage your memory. It's going to re probably replace our reference counting and it will probably replace garbage collection in due time. So anyway, uh, that's, that's really what ARC is. It's kind of the future way of managing your memory. So what are the two ways that we have currently? Well, we have reference counting, which you learned about in lessons 16 through 18 in the Objective-C tutorials, hopefully you did anyway. And basically that in reference counting, you know, when you create an object, it has a retain count of one, and then you're generally responsible for either auto-releasing the object, uh, or uh, you can release it. And that's uh, kind of just the general managing uh, memory management rules for uh, reference counting. If you retain an object, you release it. If you allocate one, you release it. You get the idea. And there's many more rules, of course, but um, you understand the point. If you want to take ownership of it, you have to retain, re retain the object to, you know, own the object, so to speak, and then once you relinquish your ownership of it, you release it. So it has fairly simple rules, but however, in reference counting, you're always concerned about, well, there's many things you're concerned about, but, uh, you know, the main one is probably leaking memory. You're constantly thinking about where you have to release stuff or if you have to auto-release stuff, and, um, you know, it's kind of cumbersome. You always have to be aware of uh, when and where you're, you know, you're releasing objects or retaining objects for that matter. So, um, you know, basically there's been many advances to help that. Properties was one of them where you could synthesize your accessors and just say that, uh, you know, this property is going to be synthesized and then it does all the setters and getters for you. And that was a pretty big help. And, you know, you specified whether it was retain or if it was just an assign, um, uh, at property or not, and you know, that made managing your memory better, but ARC will be the next step, and I'll brief, I'll talk about that in just a second. So anyway, the first way was retain counts. So that's, that's the one side of the spectrum, and the other side is pretty much the complete opposite, which is garbage collection. In garbage collection, you don't do any reference counting at all, you never call release or retain, uh, it's just not really allowed at all, or it doesn't do anything anyway, it's, um, you know, it's useless because it doesn't matter. It's, um, you know, the garbage collector is really all that does any of the memory management for you. So, uh, you know, mem in garbage collection, 
it's very easy. You just basically create objects willy-nilly, and, you know, the garbage collector will come along at any time that you don't really have control over, and it will just sweep up your objects. And, uh, you know, it'll collect them, throw them in a bin, and it will bring them back to your freed memory arena. And then you can use the, that memory all over again. Now, of course, the problem with this is that you can't really control the garbage collector. It basically has free reign of whenever the heck it's going to go. And if you're working in some, you know, important application that, you know, can't afford to be slowed down at random times, then you really don't, you probably don't want a garbage collector just intruding like that. So, uh, you know, you can kind of specify, give hints to the garbage collector that you want to collect your memory, but that still doesn't stop it from going whenever it wants. So, of course, that's one thing about the garbage collector. And so, um, Arc, though, is kind of, in a way, it's a combination of these two technologies. Uh, it's the simplicity of garbage collection, where you don't have to worry really about how you create objects. And you have the other side, of uh, you get the benefits of retain and release, which are memory efficiency. Uh, you know, as soon as you don't really need an object, you release it and uh, you don't have anything intruding with retain and release. So retain and release arc gives you the benefits of the speed of re reference counting, but it also gives you the benefits of uh, ease of use or not really worrying too much about uh, how you create your objects like you do in garbage collection. So that's basically what uh, you know we have for these tutorials. Um, arc is really the combination of the two. Uh, it's very important to know, though, that it is not a garbage collector. What Arc really does is it just looks at your code and it says, well, uh, basically, you know, uh, the user has allocated an object here and he's done with it here, so, you know, we'll release it. And that's, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, as soon as the object doesn't need to be used anymore, it's just going to be thrown away. And so what the compiler will do is insert those retain and release calls for you, and it just manages how the objects stay alive. And the nice thing about this is you really don't have to think too much about how you create objects. You can kind of just type your code and it will work. It's, it's really nice and you'll see how this works in just a bit. So anyway, I have this very contrived example to show you. And you don't really have to make these files if you don't want to because it's going to be pretty basic. So if you just want to sit back and relax and watch this, you can. <clears throat> okay. So we have this toy class, and we have a pet class that I'll show you in a second. The toy class is basically just a description method that says, I am a toy. So it's a very basic object. And the pet basically just owns a toy, and as you can see, it retains that object right there and its property. And uh, I specifically didn't make a synthesize for this. Uh, you know, you probably would and if you were writing this yourself, but I, I wanted to throw in the setter method to show you really how, um, you know, you need to retain and release. you got to kind of do that dance of retain and release before you set the object. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be leaking memory. So anyway, that's um, that just shows you how kind of complicated your code can get for really no reason at all. And you, this is kind of the kind of stuff you worry about. You worry about, uh, you know, m memory that's going to be, you know, leaked or otherwise... Um, so anyway, that's the point being is that you always have to worry about this kind of stuff. And uh, for Dialic, you know, you throw in random calls just to get rid of your instance variables, basically, and then you just call super Dialic on top of that. So Dialic is one of those methods that's kind of like, well, I'd much rather just like hide you right now because I don't even care to see you. And Arc will take care of that as well, as you will see in a bit. And then we just have a description method that prints out the toy. And the toy output, again, just to remind you, was I am a toy. All right, so let's go ahead and create this example. So we have basically a pet object. And we'll just call him pet. And we will, um, oh boy, screwed up my brackets there. Uh, we alloc init this pet. And there we go. And now we'll just say if we have a pet, basically if the pet exists, which is kind of a dumb example, but um, anyway, I'm just using it just uh, for this. Don't 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 be too concerned about the example. Just just bear with me. All right. So if we have a pet, that pet is going to now get a toy, and we'll create a toy object. So toy 
alloc init. And you're probably already looking at this like, okay, so we have a release at the end when we get rid of the pet, and then we have a release at the end of this if statement so that we can get rid of the toy. And, you know, you're probably, hopefully you're already thinking about that. At least, I kind of hope you think about that, because, you know, if you don't, then you've probably been leaking memory uh, a lot. But anyway, I'll, I'll leave that alone, because Arc is going to fix that for you. You might not have to worry any more about these retain and release calls. All right, so we're going to go ahead and log this toy. And just to make you happy, look at this toy release. And there, your toy is now safe. He is gone back into the memory pool. And we're going to also nslog our pet. So we will say nslog, log this object, pet. All right, and of course, to make you happy as well, we will say pet release. All right. So as you can see, we added a bunch of lines to release all those objects. And, you know, we're just being safe with our memory. And so you can see that, you know, memory management kind of distracts you a little bit. You, you kind of have to think about, you know, where to throw in these release calls, uh, you know, just to make sure that your objects get released. So anyway, I'll go ahead and run this just to show you that it works. And as you can see, I am a toy, I am a toy, and it's just because we print out the toy here, and we print out the toy here. All right, all is good. So what was the next step in this memory management adventure? Was that Apple created in Xcode 4, I'm pretty sure, uh, was the static analyzer. And the static analyzer was basically pretty smart at going through, excuse me, it would check to see basically, you know, if you were making a mistake here or you were leaking memory here, and it was pretty good at this. And people looked at this like, okay, well, it can tell me that I'm leaking an object, but, I mean, I still have to write these release calls. Why can't it just do it for me? And that was kind of the next step Apple basically took. They realized that, you know, the static analyzer was pretty good at realizing when, uh, you know, we had to release objects. And that's that's the next step. Arc was basically adding those calls for you. So just to show you here, if I get rid of my release call, just go like this, and I go up to Product Analyze. You'll see that uh, this is the static analyzer at work. If you never knew this tool existed, you do now. And basically, it would say that, well, you have a potential leak of an object allocated on line 16. And obviously, that's our pet object, which is being leaked because it doesn't have a release call. And even if you clicked on this, it would show you the whole path that this object takes, basically, and uh, the end result. So the first one would say, well, the method returns an Objective-C object with a retain count of 1. And that's our pet object. It's, it's being allocated, which means it has a retain count of 1. Then if, we, if you went to the second step, it would say, well, the object was leaked. The object allocated and stored into pet, which is this object, is not referenced later in this execution path and has a retain count of 1. In other words, it still has a retain count of 1, and you aren't going to ever say that it's released. So that was basically the warning, and that, you know, the static analyzer was smart enough to realize this. And so ARC is the next step. It just realizes that, well, I, I really, what I really want is to insert a release call right here, and I'd say pet release. And so now ARC basically does that for you. And if you build and run, or build this anyway, you'll see that those errors go away. So how that's yeah that's basically the definition of arc or why we have it is that uh, it was smart enough to realize this and so apple worked on compiler llvm 3.0 to uh, basically add arc support so how can we convert this object if we want to arc well we have two ways one is kind of the bad way i guess of going about it uh, or maybe if you're starting a new project you could go about this way it would be a fine way to go but basically uh, you could uh, search for auto under build settings on your target, and you could just say that we're going to switch uh, this to uh, automatic reference counting to yes, and that's that's that. So you could do it that way. Now, of course, uh, the other way though is if you go to the edit menu, refactor, and convert to Objective C Arc. And this now you can select a target. So I can select my lesson 35 here. And it will basically run through this application to check what it can convert, make sure there's no errors. If it is, it will give you 
bunch of messages uh, before this pops up, but this basically means that it was successful and it thinks it can convert it. So we can go ahead and hit next here. It will generate a preview of all the changes it's going to make. And here we go, here are the changes that it's going to implement. So as you can see, it takes out these release calls for us. So toy release is go gone and pet release will be gone, as you can see on this side, which is the arc side. All right, so that's what Arc is basically going to do. It's going to take away all those calls that you ever had, and the compiler is going to basically go through when it compiles this program and add those calls for you. So it's going to say, well, I know there should be a release call here, and so I'm going to call uh, a function that will release this toy object. And it will do the same for the pet object at the end. So Arc basically just knows where to insert these calls. And that's a nice thing, you don't really have to think about this too much. Uh, the compiler is really smart and just knows what to do. So just trust the compiler. Alright, so switching over to pet.m here for a second, I'm going to go to pet.h uh, at the end here, but you'll see that we have a toy retain, a toy release, those calls go away, again handled by Arc, and dialic goes away as well because that's just calling toy release and super dialic, and the compiler knows that if you're going to retain a uh, to an object in your in, in, as an instance variable, it's going to insert the dialic call for you. So Arc is even smart enough to do that. And Arc is so smart that basically you can't even insert a retainer release call in your code. If you try to do that, it will give you an error or a warning. And so uh, the good news about that is that uh, you don't actually have to worry about it. And so um, yeah, it just and this is the nice clean code that you get on this side instead of all this code, which is a lot of retainer releases, you just get the code that you really kind of always wanted to just write. And so the last thing here that I want to point out is this section, which brings in some new qualifiers that we have for in ARC, which is strong and weak references. And there's two more uh, that are not really going to get into for this tutorial anyway, uh, but you'll see them as we need them in the tutorials. So. But anyway, uh, basically, as you can see, it's going to convert this retain that we have here to a strong reference. And uh, the two qualifiers that I want to talk about are strong and weak references. And these are the new types that we're going to be having, or going to be using, uh, when we work with ARC. So strong, a strong reference is basically kind of like a retain. A retain, as you know, make means that you're going to take ownership of this object. And a strong reference basically means the same thing. You have a strong reference to an object, you want to hold on to it, just think strong, strong reference, holding on to it strongly. Okay, that's basically that. So this pet object is going to it's going to hold on to this toy uh, for as long as it wants to, until basically it switches with a new toy or, you know, you get the idea. So uh, with that, the other qualifier, like I said, is the weak reference. And the weak reference would be like, uh, for example, if you watch the Coco tutorials like we do with IB outlets. So uh, with IB outlets, we just connect our instance variables to things in our uh, nib files. And we don't actually retain those objects. We're just saying we're just creating a connection to them. And so uh, with that, we're basically, a uh, weak reference just means you don't own the object. It's just going to create a reference to it. What really owns the button is the nib file. And so the weak reference just means I want to make a connection, but if nothing else is going to hold on to it, then uh, you know that object will go away, and I won't own that object anymore. It's as simple as that. All right. So weak reference would just mean that you don't actually own the object; you're just making a connection to it. So anyway, I can go ahead and save this here, and as you can see, our code is nice and converted now, and all of our retain and release calls went away, and we get uh, you know all the changes that we wanted. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, for more information on ARC and how we can use it in applications, check out the Cocoa tutorials where we're going to have more information on this. And uh, more things will be in the Objective-C tutorials to come on uh, some things that we can do in Objective-C now. And anyway, I will uh, see you next tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the questions uh, and comments below. But again, check out the Cocoa tutorial I'll make soon uh, for more information on ARC. Anyway, I'll see you next tutorial.